Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today I'm going to take a look at the photos from the photo shoot that I did last week and actually analyze them a little bit with you guys to show you uh, what photos I think are good and why they work and what ones I actually think are bad and why those ones uh, really don't work. Um, so last week's photo shoot, I had the opportunity to go to a really gorgeous place um, that was kind of a spot down between some cliffs that's hidden away in the woods and uh, a lovely sequence of waterfalls there, um, you know, just flowing down through this little miniature gorge. Um, it was very, very lovely. I really enjoyed getting to photograph that. And I got, um, I think, really some great pictures from it. And I did also get a couple of photos that, um, you know, I just, I didn't really like that much. I wasn't that happy with them. Um, and so today, um, I've got a little bit of a new camera set up here. Um, so hopefully you guys like this. And that'll enable me to show you uh, from the top what's on the iPad here. And I've got the pictures set up on it. And I'm just going to kind of mark them up a little bit to show you um, how they look. Now a really great thing to do um, as, a, as a photographer and particularly as a landscape photographer where you have a lot of varying subjects is to take a look at your pictures after your photo shoot and kind of analyze them and uh, figure out you know how you think you did and um, kind of you know the elements of the photo that make it work or not work um, and um, so you know obviously when you're on location you want to be kind of analyzing the things in the scene um, but then it's really helpful afterward once you've actually got the final product of your photo and can see it on a screen or in print or something um, to have a look at that finished work and analyze it. A way that I like to do that is to actually mark up the image on the iPad, draw some lines on it, and that way I can just kind of highlight specific elements in the photo um, that, that I think are of note, right? So this particular image is one of my favorites from that day and I actually shot it in um, a portrait, you know, vertically rather than a horizontal landscape. Um, and I think that that worked really well for this scene. So what we've got here is kind of uh, four waterfalls. So there's these ones in the front and then there's these two smaller ones in the back. And uh, there's several leading lines in this photograph um, and really there's a lot of lines in this photo and what you want to watch for is your lines to kind of draw the viewer's eye into where you would like your subject to be. Now in this photo um, I want my subject to be these sort of smaller waterfalls right here. So there's a large crashing waterfall in the front and to me, that's actually not really the subject. Um, that's kind of a supporting element. And I think kind of the nature scene toward the back there is the subject. So the lines that we have in this photo, right? We've got these trees up at the top that are providing a very strong vertical line. And that's kind of drawing your eye down. And then there's a curved log right here that's drawing your eye in. And the top of this rock over here is also drawing your eye in. Now this waterfall and this rock at the bottom are very strong diagonal lines. Um, and I actually don't particularly like that in this composition. Um, I wish it could have been a little bit different. I'm not sure that there was a way um, with actual the, the footing that was actually there for me to stand on to make that different. Um, but those are kind of drawing your eye down in this direction. Uh, and then uh, when they reach this point though, right here, I think it has the opportunity for your eye to actually turn and go back up to where the photo is because it comes down this rock and reaches the end of the rock and there's another waterfall right here. And that gives your eye the opportunity to turn up that waterfall and be drawn up that way. And then you also have kind of a curve over here like that, uh, pointing upward as well. So overall, I think the lines in this image are doing a fairly good job 
of pointing you toward this um, this area in here that I really wanted to be the subject of the photograph. Um, and also the the light was really good um, that day. So there's some nice highlights right in here and right up here at the top um, that, that did a really good job of illuminating that area and making it look really nice. Um, so this photo I was I was really happy with. I'm happy with the way that these lines really lead in from the outer edges and point to that um, that area. Now after I shot this first one in a portrait um, I switched my camera to landscape. Part of that actually had to do with the tripod that I had um, which I had just gotten my new Z6 II and hadn't yet gotten a strong enough tripod to really hold it in um, that that portrait orientation. So I switched it to a uh, landscape format and I actually really did not like that as well. So if I switch over to the landscape photo, here's the, uh, the, the landscape version of that. And again, I just really wanted this, really the kind of the entire area to be the subject. Um, and you can see I cut out at the top the cliffs that were back there. Uh, and at this point, the whole photo really is the subject. There's nothing else except the subject in the photo. And I think that that made the composition break down a little bit because there weren't supporting elements um, in the scene. So the result was then that these, these two small waterfalls in the back uh, kind of get lost in the frame. And the log that's in here is really kind of drawing your eye downward now and the curve of this rock is also drawing your eye downward. So those are kind of pointing down and so that causes your eye from the top of the photo to move downward. It hits this next waterfall here, moves down. If you come in from this direction, you're also moving down. This rock is kind of pointing in the same way and the flow of the water from this side of the frame is pointing in the same way. So the result of this is that the focal point of the image where your eye is drawn to is there. It's the base of the waterfall um, and, the, and the rock that's right there. And to me that doesn't make nearly as interesting of a subject. We've got two neat little waterfalls in the back that are just completely lost. Uh, we're not seeing them at all and we've got all these things in the frame that are just pointing us downward to uh, what's really just a rock right here if we get some of the lines out of the way. It's really, it's, it's just a rock with water crashing on it um, that's sort of in the lower third and centered in the frame. To me that's not, um, that's not an interesting photograph, right? So, so this was, um, this was not my favorite shot from the day. Um, I liked the previous portrait version of it much better and I'm really glad that I captured it that way. Um, and w was able to get the, the tripod kind of steadied long enough for that. Um, but this particular one, I, I don't think I like that well. Now, um, after that one, which had kind of a broad area, I zoomed in a little bit because I noticed that uh, the focal point was the base of the waterfalls there. So I zoomed in on the base of those waterfalls and made that the actual subject of the photograph on purpose since that was where your eye was naturally drawn to. Um, so at this point you've got a leading line in your two waterfalls here coming down so at the bottom you got kind of this plant right here that points up a little bit and you've got the water coming in that direction. All of those again are still pointing to that same area there with the rock but this time that's the subject of the photo is the water crashing on the rock at the bottom and so I've made it larger in the frame, I've centered it up a little bit and it just is a lot more pleasing uh, like that. So you know as you're in the field try to analyze the photos you've just taken as well and, and see if, you know, if your eye is not being drawn where you think, maybe that could actually make an interesting subject where your eye is drawn to. Now once I had captured that, and this doesn't really merit um, a, a lot of analysis on its own, um, because it is quite similar to the one that I just looked at in composition, 
Um, but I captured a similar shot with the camera focused on the plant that was in the bottom of the frame right here. So the water is now crashing behind it, the rocks are a little bit softer back there, and this plant in the foreground is really sharp, and I kind of got a little bit of a light on it as well that I was then able to enhance a little bit in the post-processing too. And it really makes this plant stand out, um, and it's just kind of this small spindly plant growing out of a rock with this waterfall crashing behind it. And that makes a really interesting contrast in the frame between this tiny weak little plant and this huge crashing waterfall in the background. Um, and so that I think did work out quite well and, and was pretty interesting like that. Um, the next photo then was I, I really did like those little waterfalls that were in the back and I wanted to do something with those. Um, and so I tried to take a picture just of those small waterfalls in the back. Now the, the one thing that you will immediately notice about this photograph as soon as I open it is this large log right here uh, in, in the middle of the frame. It's quite obvious. Um, and it cuts right across this little pool at the base of the waterfall. And I wish that that log wasn't there, but you know, obviously I'm not going to go over with a chainsaw or something and cut this log out. Uh, not only would that be very unethical of me to do that, it would also be completely impractical. There was no way for me to get there if I had wanted to. Uh, but of course, we don't want to do that. So this log is somewhat in the way and I don't really like it that much. Um, so I think this turned out fairly well as a composition with the exception of this log that there was just no way around. And so for that reason especially, I think this is not going to be uh, you know, what my favorite new portfolio shot. But I did want to make the most of that waterfall scene. Um, I, I think it's a pretty image, but like I said, not really uh, my next portfolio shot just because of that log that's there. So that's kind of a little bit of analysis of these photos, um, particularly focusing on those leading lines today. If you uh, did enjoy this video, uh, just leave me a comment down below, let me know, and I can definitely try to make more videos like this in the future analyzing my photos, as well as go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any uh, videos in the future. And I do want to say thank you to all the people who have subscribed to my channel already. I really appreciate you guys uh, doing that and uh, hope that you'll follow along. If you guys did not see the video where I took these pictures, uh, definitely check that out. I'll leave a link to it for you. Um, and go have a look at some of my landscape photography videos as well as some other videos that I've made reviewing some things and so forth. Don't forget to uh, hit the like button on your way out. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.